So let's talk about the van der Waals loops and the critical constants. All right. And let's see, I left myself a lot of space, but I'm not even sure why. I don't think that was necessary. Um, I should have made this graph bigger. So I'll just remind you, right, our simple um, Boyle's law, okay, if we look at P versus V, we know that's an inverse relationship, so it looks something like this, okay? And um, this would be, so if I define a bunch of temperatures, T1, which is greater than T2, which is greater than T3, Perhaps this would be the isotherm at T1. So here we can see from this data, um, as well as what you're going to calculate in your Mathematica assignment, the next isotherm might be down here, T2. And then the next isotherm might be down here, T3, and so on. Okay. According to the ideal gas law, right, all of these curves should still have the same uh, slope, if you will, at, you know, a given volume, okay? But now what happens in the van der Waal equation, okay, so let's write van der Waal down, P, uh, NRT over V minus NB, so I wrote the nonmolar volume form, be able to go, you know, back and forth between molar volume and not molar volume, okay? So what ends up happening in the van der Waal equation there is a temperature, we'll call it a critical temperature. Here it is, okay, I'm gonna call that Tc equals the critical temperature. And that is where this, whatever molecule we're talking about, in this case, this is um, carbon dioxide, this is CO2, okay? So at that critical temperature, which in the case of carbon dioxide, 31.04 degrees Celsius, it's no longer a gas, okay? So if we looked at the full phase diagram, those critical constants, so then we also, of course, have critical pressure as well as critical volume, okay? Critical pressure and critical volume. That's the point where a phase transition might happen, okay? And if we keep trying to use um, the van der Waal equation, for example, to describe a gas over conditions in which it is not a gas, the equation is going to fail. And that's why these are called the van der Waals loops. Because now what you notice here is we recognize, well, below 31.04, CO2 is not going to be a gas anymore. But now when we try to like make a van der Waal equation at 20 degrees C, Look, it no longer has this nice P inverse V relationship. It makes this kind of loop, right? It, it uh, pressure and volume end up with the opposite relationship. That's not physically accurate. It's just because you're trying to continue to use the van der Waal equation to describe a gas, and it's no longer a gas at that range, okay? So what do I have next here? So here is a more um, kind of expanded view of the van der Waals loops and the critical constants. And so if I look at it at that whole um, uh, three-dimensional surface, like I showed you at the beginning of the lecture slides, right? Here you can see those loops will start looking kind of crazy, right? So this is not physical, okay? So now what's going on here with this reduced pressure space, okay? So these reduced variable spaces are really useful because it, you don't have to specify what the units or the axes are. So for example, here this is still P versus V, P versus V, but instead this is P divided by P critical. And this is V, in this case it's actually Vn, divided by V critical. So that's what we call a reduced variable space. Reduced variable space. That means we don't have to spy, specify um, the actual unit, right? Because if this pressure was in atmospheres, but I then divided it by the critical pressure in atmospheres, then it becomes unitless. And look, there's something really cool that happens. So at one and one, right? So in other words, at one and one, that's when the pressure is exactly at the critical pressure, and that's when the volume is exactly at the critical volume. Look, that's right where we get that saddle point. 
And then beyond those pressures and volumes, the loops start taking over. And remember, these loops are not physically accurate, right? So this is the point where we should no longer use the Van der Waal equation. Okay. So now, what do we call this thing? We call it an inflection plane. Okay. And so we don't have to do the reduced variable space just to see the inflection point, right? Like here back to this scale, so this is P versus V still, but no longer in that reduced variable space. You know, you can see there's the actual numbers like, you know, 0 through 140 ATM and 0 to like 0.16. The oh, cubic decimeters, Atkins. It's, he's British, so they use cubic decimeters. Get over it. Um, so you can see you would still get that uh, inflection point even in the non-reduced variable space. Okay? So that means how do we find what the critical values are, okay? So we can find them, uh, where do I have more room to write? Um, I think I'm gonna write these down here, okay? So to find the critical constants, okay? P versus VM, remember this is Van der Waal, all right? So, let me see if I can write this a little bit better. I'm getting sloppy and tired as the day is progressing. So, to find the critical constants, dp, dvm, set equal to zero, and, and you also have to do the second derivative, okay? pdvm squared, second derivative set equal to zero, okay? And a little bit of algebra. I'm not gonna do this one, okay? Hint, 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 I had something in my eye. I'm not gonna do this one, but oh my God, be familiar with the Van der Waals loops and know how to calculate the critical constants as well as how to derive them. Harmon? Yep, I did it. I'm gonna tell you what they are. You, ha you know how to use Mathematica now? We haven't talked about integration and differentiation, but you can certainly give it a shot, okay? Um, you can also flex your academic muscle and do these suckers by hand, okay? Your choice, but I do want you to know how to arrive at these values. So when we do this analysis and we do the algebra, and remember, the algebra is always the hard part. Critical volume is actually just three times B. That's pretty cool. It's three times um, the B parameter, the uh, Van der Waals B, okay? PC, critical pressure, is equal to A over 27B squared, okay? And, and of course, these equations are in the book, right? This is not your only source to find these equations, right? If you can't make out my god-awful handwriting while I figure out how to re- ah, see? Well, I have to figure out how to rewrite with this stylist, okay. And T critical is 8A divided by 27RB. Um, this little derivation of these critical constants is not bad at all. Um, promise, okay? Come in and find me if you need help doing it. But um, I do want you to see how we can get to that. Um, obviously, like it shouldn't be too hard to calculate, right? It's just plug and chug, three times B, A divided by 27B squared, um, and so on and so forth. Um, but right, we could um, calculate this. So this is cool. These are experimental isotherms, but our calculation of critical temperature um, for CO2 uh, should be really close to that. And in fact, we could do that. Do I have the CO2 data in here? Yes, I do. How about that? So let's write that down real quick. 0.0427 for B and 3.59 for A. And of course, I'm using the stand, uh, standard units for, I shouldn't say standard units because standard would be bar, not ATM. Um, but I'm using our nominal units that we normally do. Okay, keep going, keep going. Okay, so let's just calculate that critical temperature. 
for CO2. Let's see how well um, this does. So 8 times 3.59, okay, divided by 27. Uh, I have to use 0 0.08206 for R because of the use of atmospheres. Oh, I might have screwed it up because I can't talk apparently. I know you're thinking, why isn't he not plugging this into Mathematica? Because I'm old school, you guys. If you can't make it work on this, then you're doing something wrong. It's okay. I do stuff wrong all the time. So you can do it in Mathematica. You can get a much, much better answer than me. Okay. Oh my god, I'm doing something wrong. You guys are like probably painful. Like what the heck? 3.59. We're going to get this. It's going to happen. Divided by 0.0427. Okay, great. I get 303.6 Kelvin minus 273.15. Hey, that ain't bad. I just got 30.42 for the theoretical critical temperature. The experimental is 31.04. That's not bad. That's not bad at all. Okay. Great. So what else do we got? I think that's it. Oh my God. I blacked out. I don't even remember what any of that is. Okay. Just kidding. I think that's pretty good, folks. It's Friday. It's four o'clock. I'm going to go outside. You're not going to watch this probably right now, but hopefully you're already outside doing something. It looks really amazing out there. Looks, yeah, it looks awesome. I got to go. I'm going to get on my bike. Okay, later, Hosen.